Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, I've done some videos about kind of stupid, evil, other things. It's interesting, and I think there is a, a scenario there where it bothers people. It makes people uncomfortable. You see some of the comments, some of the mails I've got. It, it makes this idea of maybe the people we're really pissed at, maybe these, these comic creators that we've been calling kind of sinister, awful, maniacal, evil people are dumb. Or maybe they're just, they're not thinking about things. Or maybe they're, you know, paid, you know, $65 a page and they don't really think much about it that way. They're spending their time and their on something else. And we're, we're mistaking kind of just not fully invested as evil. And it, it makes, it makes me, like I said, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. It's probably, you know, I, I, there's two topics I hit on here that get people really upset. And one is this one, you know, they, they really don't like this idea of mine. And the other is uh, when I talk about people should be paid more in comics. And, and it's, uh, those two always are, are trigger points for people. So here's a mail that's, that's, and I appreciate this one. Here's somebody who's trying to talk through it. That's trying to actually say, I don't agree, here's why, and, and trying to reason through it. So I appreciate this mail as opposed to some of the other ones I've gotten. But let's, let's go through this. It says, hey, Perch, I'm not much of a comic book fan. I do enjoy reading comics, but there wasn't a comic store near me growing. And we didn't go to the mall that often, so I never developed a habit to collect comics. But I do love the concept of superheroes. As an adult, I've been seeing it as the ultimate individualist power fantasy. And I've been watching the drama around them that's been happening for five to ten years, admittedly. It's been somewhat one-sided, and I don't go on Twitter. I, don't, I just watched your video, Do You Also Hear Angry Voices? And in the second half, I kind of see where you and the letter are coming from, but I don't fully agree. Uh, to recap, what the letter is coming from is, you know, one reason why people get so, you know, intense of that comic creators, some of these people are quote unquote evil. Um, it, why they get so tense about it is because if you say you're, you know, you're, you're fighting a brave fight against stupid, it doesn't sound good. Like it's, it's, you know, it's hard to feel noble when you're fighting dummies. It's easy to feel noble when you're fighting villains. And it's just kind of, and, and we're comic book fans. So, you know, we should, that, that makes sense. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think, you know, who, who in a weird way, and I, I met this person who hated stupid more than evil. And he would often say, you know, if I could go to war with stupid, I would do it. Because those are the people, you know, evil are at least getting something done, even if you don't like it. Stupid are people who are just, you know, slowly killing everyone through incompetence. And, yeah, he, he, the guy made a good point. But anyway. So let me, uh, so this, this guy, as I said, you see, the, the writer doesn't agree. So here, and now the person lays out their case. And like I said, this will resonate with a lot of you. There's going to be many of you who will do this, uh, who will be, you know, behind this, this writer. And that's, that's also completely fine. Purpose of my videos, purpose of why I do this is to talk with you, tell me what, you know, tell you what's on my mind, have a conversation, look at your comments. It is not to gain a following. My goal here is not to create a cult. My, gro my goal is not to get uh, people who are, you know, mindless uh, lackeys. I, I, I am happy when people disagree. I get uncomfortable, weirdly uncomfortable, when people, you know, just feel like, when it feels like people are all in, uh, just because they're, you know, they, they feel they have to be. That, that gets me really uncomfortable. Anyway, so here we go. Here's the reason for the mail. It says, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that you see evil as obvious cackling laughter in your face, telling you they're evil and going to blow up buildings, murder tons of people and throw kittens up into trees while twirling, twirling their mustaches. Um, you, are, you are wrong about that. That is not, I, I see what you're describing here is comedy. I don't think real life evil actually works that way. I, I don't know if people twirl mustaches anymore. Do they blow kittens or throw kittens into trees? I mean, in fairness, I might throw a kitten into a tree. That sounds kind of funny, to be honest. But, uh, but no, no, this is not my definite evil, evil at all. Uh, before we get to the rest of it, I mean, evil is somebody who thinks uh, entirely about themselves, themselves first to a sociopathic degree. Somebody who, uh, when given the choice to do right or wrong, picks wrong because you know, that they just, it, it, maybe it benefits them or maybe they are bored or, you know, maybe they just, uh, like to see the world burn for whatever reason. That's evil. I think evil is somebody who has a, uh, you know, again, it's an option to help ignore or destroy and they pick destroy. Um, ignore can be evil. If you see somebody drowning and you're like, well, that's tough on them. You know, that can, that can be an evil act, but, but really I think I find evil thoughtful. I find evil intentional. And I find evil usually is selfish. Evil is something that, you know, you, you think about yourself over others. You are, you have a, a wildly out of control ego and you use it to the, not, not to empower yourself. Cause there are plenty of people who have big egos that, you know, uh, you, know you empower themselves with that and they're not, they're not inherently evil, 
But there's others with massive egos who use it to demolish others who, you know, don't need to pick the fight they're picking, but they do it because of insecurity, jealousy, any number of things, or just plain, you know, sociopathic behavior. That's what I see as evil. So, so I, I am correcting you. You are wrong. Or you were wrong about, you're not wrong. You're wrong about what you thought for me. Uh, back to the mail. It says some evils, uh, so let's see, but there's more to evil than that. I agree. Some evils believe they're in the right. Most do, actually. Some don't care about what's right or wrong so long as they get ahead in life. That's pretty common. Some are aggressive. Some are passive. Some are weak and cowardly and will hide themselves in places, like in comics and movies, where they think they can influence people, mainly children, to think like they do. Um, this is that last bit. I, again, I know this is a source of disagreement with most of you, so you don't have to, in the comments, tell me that. I know most of you are going to disagree with that, I say. But I think it's been overblown, the amount of people who go into comics for the intent purpose of trying to brainwash children. Um, frankly, there's better places. And, and if you, it's, it's also, evil can be dumb in the sense of, uh, and it's not stupid or evil, sometimes they're both. But if a teacher for example, who really wants to push an agenda in a school that they know is something parents don't like, others don't like, but they find it funny. The, I'm going to trans your kids kind of mentality that we've seen some people say, that's a different kind of evil. The person who's doing that certainly believes they are, they, they don't believe they're doing evil. They believe they're doing something noble and glorious, but it is ultimately about them. It does track back to, you know, it's not about the kids. It's about their own ego. It's about their own desire to control, and that is evil. I don't think that many of the people in comics are that way, not maybe for lack of trying, but because, quite frankly, there's easier, better, more effective ways to do that. I absolutely think that there are people in comics, writers mostly, who believe it's their God-given you know, mission to try and espouse their agenda, their you know, ideas through that comic, and they do. But I think it's a different, uh, it's, it's a kind of at a different level and a much harder one to prove that this is a large coordinated effort. And I, again, I know many of you disagree with me on that and we can get into it another time, but it's, it's, it, that's a harder thing to make stick for a variety of reasons. It doesn't mean that everybody is glorious, innocent little, you know, fairies, but it, I don't, God, I don't mean it that way. I understand. I'm saying innocent uh, little uh, elves, I, I, whatever. I'm trying to think of something innocent that came out wrong. All right, fine. Um, let's, let's go to this next paragraph. It says, one of the keys to evil wickedness is having malice in your heart. Yeah, usually born out of selfishness, for sure. Not too long ago, Mark Wade prevented your boy Zach from publishing his comics through a comic company. No matter how you slice it, there is obviously malice in his action. Okay, so here's my belief, and, and you know, having talked to individuals involved, um, I don't, I don't, I think the... I'm going to, you know, prevent this guy because I hate him or out of malice. It's just as bad, by the way. What I'm, what I'm about to say, I think, is just as, you know, wrong. And you could say evil. But I believe that, that when Mark Wade uh, made the calls and pushed to, you know, keep the comic from being published by Antarctic, I believe that his, his intent and goal in life, he believed that he was preventing somebody who was bad to his friends, mean, evil, you know, he believed his opponent, in this case Zach, was evil, and he believed it was his mission to prevent that, that evil from going to a comic. If he was able to keep that person from getting published in a comic, he would be saving others. It was born out of a desire to be a hero. Um, and again, if, if you go back to my definition of evil, a lot of those actions are ones born out of selfishness. You know, you, you, I look at that situation, there's a lot of different ways you can look at it, and I absolutely do think it was wrong to take it upon themselves to make a bunch of calls and try and keep the book from being done. I absolutely believe that was wrong, 100%. The end. I, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong when people try and cancel people. I think it's wrong when people make a bunch of calls and try and use their influence or their power to prevent somebody from getting work. I think the work should do that, the work alone. But anyway, uh, the, the interesting consequence of that entire thing was that it robbed the people of being able to decide I'm buying it or I'm not buying it on their own. And that's the way it should have gone. It should have been done that way. The comic should have come out. And quite frankly, if the comic had come out via Antarctic Press, he would have made less money. 
because of everything that happened, because of the boom in crowdfunding, because of all these other pieces, his career, meaning Zach's, benefited. Now, that doesn't mean that action wasn't wrong or, you know, hey, all sin's forgiven. But it just goes to show you that when you, you try and do these actions for yourself, out of selfishness, out of a desire, I mean, in this case, the selfish act was, I'm going to be a hero to others. I do think that was selfish. The right thing to do would be to, to go on and say, um, I think this comic is bad. I think the person behind it is bad. I think you shouldn't support it. And uh, I, I'm saddened that something like this gets published in the industry. That's what, what Mark should have done if you believe that. And then let the market decide. But, you know, that wasn't the way it went. It was it turned into self-protection. That was wrong. But the consequence of that, and this is where a lot of people actions, you know, fall on their face. The consequence of that it was it actually boosted Beck's career and money. So, you know, he didn't do, I think it, it would be completely wrong and inaccurate to say he did Zach a favor. He didn't. But the consequences of this selfishness led to, you know, I wound up hurting his enemy. And so that's just kind of the, the moral to the story is a lot of, of actions, selfish actions, actions born like this, have that result. It has a result to doing the opposite you want, of thing you want. Anyway. Continuing with the mail, it says, just in your video, you talked about Mark Brooks' tweet that ended up being a self-own. Not that he would realize it or acknowledge it, but I'll bet he does. You don't feel good. When you do stuff like that, in this case, the tweet was like, look at these two, like the, the football player and the cheerleader, and then kind of insinuated they both had miserable lives. And when you post something like that, it may, it may make you feel good in the moment. But, you know, hours later, you, you just, you, there's that, you know, it's this crazy thing called a conscience that goes, you're a douche. And it does, it, does, it does get you at some point. Anyway, despite how pathetic it was, it was still filled with malice toward those who are happily living a lifestyle that he most likely rejected while he is miserable. I think, again, malice to me is a strong word. And I don't think it fits the situation. I think that, that the tweet with the football player and everything was jealousy. And it was a desire to make a joke against, you know, it was a classic like, look at these dumb jocks. It was, it was, a, it was kind of a tired joke. It was, a, you know, one born out of insecurity and jealousy. And, and people who, will, who know Brooks will tell you the guy's very insecure. He screams insecure. When, when you meet him, he's, you know, he wants to brag about his car or his watch. This is, you know, the people who are comfortable with themselves don't do that. But I think that, you know, for me and where I draw the line is just me. You don't have to be the same way. You don't have, and please, you know, respect others views of evil and malice kind of where they draw that line to me it's a big word when you say evil like that you're saying something along the lines of bigot racist white supremacist you know uh you know uh, sexist misogynist etc um homophobic those are big terms and i think they not they should not be thrown around casually i'm not gonna be quick to say evil or malice and and label people that way now, certainly actions, you can, you can point to some actions and they fit that bill. And that's fine. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm definitely not the person who walks around believing everybody's just a, an angel. But I do think words have weight and have meaning. And if you're going to say evil, you are signing up for somebody who's intentionally trying to cause harm to others. And a lot of these actions are born out of jealousy, ignorance, stupidity, insecurity, a lot of other terrible things. A lot of things that grown men and women are supposed to, you know, work their way out of. But, you know, evil to me, like bigot, like Nazi, is, is kind of, it's, it's going through a door you can't go, you can't reverse. So, you know, I just, I, I think it's best to reserve those for the right moment, personally. Anyway, Mail almost wraps up, says, I won't say that Marvel and DC is 100% evil, but I do believe that evil has been festering there for some time now and is in the driver's seat. Sorry for the long mail. I have so much more thoughts on the matter, but it tends to be a struggle for me to get everything organized. Thank you for your time. Thank you for writing it. I appreciate you laying out your, your point of view, and hopefully we understand each other a little bit better through the process. I, I think that, um, you know, you said the corporations there at the end, Marvel, DC. It's, I think that, and this, again, just my point of view, you don't have to take it. It's just how I think. Um, I get also wary of calling corporations evil unless it is purely in their mission statement to do evil. And I, I mean, like, and, and you can, you can, you know, kind of filter this a little bit. Like if, uh, 
if Google is part of their business model is to gather personal data and exploit it for money, then I think you, you, you now have, you've, you've signed on to a place where you can call the, the base of the corporation, the mission statement, evil. But in general, why I resist saying Marvel and DC are evil is for almost a reason that I think you agree with me on based on your final comment is I think it takes away responsibility of individuals. And I think individuals, um, they shouldn't be sheltered or hidden by the corporation. And I also think that, you know, you've got a lot of people, you've got hundreds of people in some of these companies. Are they all evil? No. They all have different motivations. And if we're going to solve anything, if we're going to work through it, if we're going to improve, if we're going to work there, not work there, whatever we're going to do with a corporation, it helps to know. It helps to know the motivations. It helps to know the why. If you know the why, then it gives you more power, more ability to confront the why, to, to solve the problems, to get in front of them, to address things. Um, that's why, you know, if, if you believe that there is a problem with racism in America, uh, pointing around you and saying all white people are racist or 49 percent, the ones that voted for Trump, whatever vote for Trump, the, 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 the amount, the percentage that were, were Republicans, they're all racist. The second you, you, you kind of make broad generalizations, you wind up taking, you take that, uh, that, that moment of responsibility away from human beings. You take it away from the individual, and suddenly it's just this this blob, and and you don't get anywhere with that. You don't get to solve anything. Do you think that uh, Joe Biden, when he says that, you know, the Republicans are fascists or some of the Republicans are fascists, do you think that 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 what's the outcome? What does he think is going to happen? Even let let's say he believes that's true, and it's not just a you know the escalation of our politics where. Democrats and Republicans call each other just the worst names they can think of. Let's say he actually believes in his heart and soul that Republicans are all fascists. Does he does he convert anyone with that talk? Again, it's going through a door you can't come back out of. You you don't you don't solve anything. You 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 marshal an army against you. You you tell everybody, I mean, you're calling somebody one of the worst things in the world. You're telling people you're over there, I'm over here, there's no bridge between us, we're done. You can't do that. You know, Biden, in, in this regard, Biden has been a miserable failure as president. And I, this isn't meaning to turn political, but, you know, we'll get there. I think that whether you're Trump, whether you're Biden, whether you're Obama, and I think Obama, which a lot of people have, you know, dislike, and there's lots of people who, who like and dislike Obama, you know, there's people who are critics of him. Um, Obama did manage to keep that buttoned up. Now, maybe he thought that, maybe he hated all Republicans, certainly, but it's it's in the age of calling people deplorables, calling people fascists, and on the other end, Republicans calling people pedophiles and groomers and all the rest of these big, wide groups. You are, in effect, saying, we are never going to see eye to eye. We're never going to come together. We're never going to work cooperatively. We can't even really coexist in the same country anymore. If you're a leader, it's a failure. I don't care what your politics are, that's a failure. It sucks to have to take the responsibility of working and trying to cross the aisle to the group you don't like or the group that you think is irrational. It's hard work. Maybe that's why being president is supposed to be a hard job and not easy to get because you're expected to do hard slash impossible things. I, I, do you have people in your life that you can't imagine working closely with? I do. Plenty. Does that mean I, I get to just pretend they don't exist and, and say I'm on an island and you're on an island? We never get to work together. We can never we can never coexist. Well, that would be pretty foolish. That's that's unfortunately not the real world. So anyway, sorry for the big long rant. That's that's my feelings on the matter. Um, but I, I really I appreciate you putting it, putting all that thought into it. It's good. And again, several of you won't disagree, won't agree with this take, and that's okay. You know, I don't think you're evil. Thanks for listening.